Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. In today's in process model kit review, we'll be looking at Hobby Boss's 148 scale F80 C shooting star. This is Hobby Boss kit number 81725. This kit was released in 2014, and to my knowledge, it remains the only modern 148 scale F80 or P80 shooting star currently available. The Lockheed P80 shooting star was the first jet fighter used operationally by the U.S. Army Air Forces during World War II. The first prototype was built in 1943, and two pre-production models saw limited service in Italy prior to the end of World War II. The P80 designation was later changed to F80, and the F-80 saw extensive combat use during the Korean War as a fighter bomber. In this video, we'll take a look at what comes in the box. We'll take a look at the kit instructions and we'll go through those. We'll also look at the detailing on the small parts that are included with this kit. We'll look at the surface detailing on the exterior of the kit. We'll also talk about the fit of the major components. We'll look closely at the clear parts that are included with this kit. We'll also look at the photo etch parts that are included with the kit, as well as the color and marking guides. We'll look at the decals themselves and talk about those. And we'll talk about any construction or accuracy issues to be aware of on this kit. And we'll be attempting to answer the question, is Hobby Boss's 148 scale F80 shooting star the best F-80 kit currently available. Looking at what comes in the box, there are five sprues of gray plastic parts. There is one sprue of clear parts, a small set of photo etched seat belts, as well as a large decal sheet. Looking at the kit instructions, step one just covers the assembly of the nose wheel and the assembly of the nose gear into the wheel well. I'll probably leave the nose gear off of the aircraft until final painting is completed. Step two covers the cockpit interior, including the assembly of the ejection seat and the cockpit tub and the control console. There's a lot of parts involved in this step, but if you take your time, go slowly through this, I think you should be rewarded with a nice looking cockpit in the end. Here we can see some of the cockpit parts, including the instrument panel and the base of the seat and the cockpit tub. There are two decals for the instrument panel. Curiously, the ones on the main part of the panel are all printed in yellow. Here we can see the detail on the side panels of the cockpit tub. And this is the photo etch fret that includes the seat belts for the kit. I like the fact that these are included. Step three covers the assembly of the main gear. I don't foresee any problems with this step. The detailing on the gear parts themselves looks very nice and the detailing on the inside of the gear doors looks nice as well. These are the main wheels themselves. There are two steps in the middle of the construction process that are unnumbered. The first of which has you adding the air intake splitters and nose guns to the fuselage halves. The second part of that step has you adding the cockpit tub and nose gear wheel well to the aircraft. It also specifies to add eight grams of ballast although no nose weight is included in the kit. Looking at the fit of the forward fuselage halves, it looks like these should fit pretty well. You should be able to get a nice seam that only requires minimal cleanup here. Looking at the top of this seam, I think the same holds true. This should clean up nicely. The next step is also unnumbered, and it has you assembling the engine and installing that in the rear fuselage, and then attaching that assembly to the forward fuselage assembly and adding the nose gear doors. And the final part of this step is assembling the two wingtip tanks. Looking at the engine itself, that went together nicely. And when you close the fuselage halves around the engine, you should be able to get a very nice join Looking at the lower seam, I think this will join nicely and clean up nicely as well. I have glued together the wingtip tanks and those look good. They will require some minor cleanup along that seam. Step number four covers some optional wingtip tanks and optional underwing ordnance. The parts here look nice. I don't anticipate any problems with these steps. In step five, we're adding the main gear bays and air brake bays to the lower wing center section. We're also adding the flaps to that assembly. I've added the gear bays and the air brake bays to this part. Everything went very well here. The fit was very nice. 
The detail on the flaps is decent. I did have to scrape off a couple of ejector pen marks on the inside of the flaps, but they should install cleanly. Step number six has you joining the upper wings to the lower wings and then installing the ordnance and the main landing gear to the lower wing. I'll simply add the wing assembly to the fuselage assembly and paint the airframe first and then I will go back afterwards and I will mount the underwing armament and the gear. The detail on the surface of the wings is very nice. It's engraved, it's petite, it's consistent. And the fit of the upper wings to the lower wings is also excellent. In step seven, we're just attaching the lower wing assembly to the fuselage assembly and adding the tail planes and the cockpit transparencies. Dry fitting the parts here, it looks like we'll be able to achieve a very, very nice fit. The tail planes went on nicely and they'll just need some minor sanding around the join line. Looking at the transparencies, these parts look great. I don't anticipate any problems with these. I think they should fit nicely on the kit. Moving on to the color and marking guide, there are markings for two Korean War era F-80s included with the kit. Both aircraft are natural metal F-80s and both marking options are colorful. The decals themselves look to be opaque. They look to be in register and I don't anticipate any problems here. I've used the Hobby Boss decals before. And as far as accuracy goes, the main gripe with this kit is the shape and size of the air intakes. If we look at this view of the air intakes and compare that to a picture of the actual aircraft, the shape of the lower portion of the air intake just seems a bit off. Is Hobby Boss's 148 scale F-80 Shooting Star the best F-80 kit currently available? Well, I think for most modelers it will be. If you can live with the shape of the air intake on this kit, it doesn't really present any construction challenges. I think the fit overall is excellent. The engraved detailing on the exterior of the kit is nice. The decals look nice. The clear parts look nice. The interior should look good through the cockpit canopy. And I'm really looking forward to completing this build. The only real competition for this kit is the ancient monogram F-80 and while that kit may be slightly more accurate as far as overall shape accuracy goes it is a much more difficult build with regards to fit and it also has the raised panel lines. Well I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you out there have built one of Hobby Boss's F-80 series of kits please feel free to comment in the comment section below. As always I hope you found this video entertaining and informative and until next time Model on.